for a few minutes, I'm going to deal um, with what's going on today in our land. And uh, it's just one of the things that's going on um, that the Holy Spirit started highlighting to me. And um, I actually ministered on this the other night. It's called the spirit of perversion. The spirit of perversion. Y'all were silent on that. Jesus. Usually y'all say something, but y'all was y'all was silent. Okay. Your silence is an indication. Don't say nothing. <laughs> Galatians chapter number uh, one. And um, Galatians chapter one. Perversion is the alteration of something from its original course, meaning, or state, to a distortion or corruption of what was first intended. Perversion is the alteration of something from its original course, meaning, or state, to a distortion or corruption of what was first intended. One more time. Perversion is the alteration of something from its original course. So if you uh, would please, if you put the title of my message as you guys share it, the spirit of perversion, please share. Y'all got so much word that y'all keep to yourself. Why y'all keep all this word to yourself? And then y'all know y'all on a share assignment. Some of y'all just so selfish and disobedient for no reason. The spirit of perversion is in our land today. And there is such a good word that the dictionary used, a distortion uh, of truth to the point where the people of God have started to embrace these new ideologies. And when I call them new, they're not really, they're not really new. Uh, they become more visible because of the spread of social media, this attitude or these uh, ideology perspectives um, have been in the world. Philosophies have been in the world for a long time. But now people are starting, I want to say, to embrace them more. Galatians chapter number one. And if you do some study and, and some background on uh, Galatia and the church at Galatia, at Galatia, you find out the Apostle Paul was writing a letter to people, glory to God, who had come out of Judaism. They had come out of Judaism, and what happens was they were saved by the grace of God. They were saved by the blood of Jesus. They were saved by faith, but they were teachers from that perspective or that background that continued to sway, bamboozle, manipulate, uh, hoodwink, bullwinkle, trying to pull them away from the gospel of grace by faith. And so when you read certain of the chapters, you see the Apostle Paul going forth and you see him making some analogies and then in certain uh, parts of the scripture, you see where he says, you know, circumcision or uncircumcision does not avail anything. They were still going back and saying that a man is not a true Jew unless he be circumcised uh, in his flesh. And the Apostle Paul was saying, look, this is a new day. A new day has come. Uh, Jesus now is our Savior. Glory to God. He is our kinsman redeemer. Glory to God. And so the people or the teachers of that time kept on trying to draw them back and pull them back. And so Paul began to write in Galatians chapter number one, and he says in verse number six, look what he says. He says, read, I marvel that you are soon. So, so when he said, I marvel that you are soon, 
it's also uh, uh, giving us the hint or perspective that this group of people hadn't been saved for so long. Paul had planted the seed of the gospel. He says, I'm I'm, I'm, I'm marvel. How you remove from him that called you him, the person. Somebody said the person. See, what you must understand is that, watch this, is that what we believe is not centered around an idea. It's not centered around a philosophy. It's not centered around a perspective, but it's centered around a person. And the person is Jesus. Glory to God. And so we see Jesus all throughout the scripture. We may not see his name, but we see Jesus. We see his character. We see his traits. We see his sovereignty. We see his holiness. We see his nature all throughout scripture. And so this, what we read and what we do, do is centered around a person and his name is Yeshua the anointed one the Christos he says I marvel he said that called you into the grace of Christ watch this now you're talking about another gospel verse number seven read it which really is really not another Hey, but there be some, read y'all. Oh, there it goes. Some that would pervert the gospel of Christ. How do you pervert the gospel of Christ? Through distortion, through false doctrines, through false teachers. In other words, Paul had laid the proper foundation. Paul had a revelation that he had received, glory to God, that even some of the 12 apostles that walked with Jesus did not receive. And so Paul begins to speak on how he did not receive this revelation from a man, but that he received it from the spirit of God he says I did not confer with flesh and blood regarding this but I was given a dispensation of the gospel glory to God a dispensation of the gospel was revealed to me was released to me he says my assignment in the earth is to teach and preach the gospels to the Gentile to preach the gospel to the Gentiles which is not another, he says in verse 7, but there be some that would trouble you, trouble you when false teachers come, glory to God. They can be like a cancer in the body. Let me say something. I'm about to say something really strong, and some of you probably not going to like it, but what happens is we've gone away from Scripture. The Bible says to mark them that cause divisions, the things that you have learned. See, we don't mark people anymore. When we mark them, you go out and be their friend. When we mark them, I'm talking to you. When we mark them, you go out to eat with them. See, what happens is there can never be any growth and stability in the body because when correction comes, someone takes it personal, and then someone going to say, here you go, I'm going to sue yeah, they did it wrong. Pastor did it wrong. Pastor didn't do you wrong, and that's why you can't grow, and that's why you're still unstable. You're praying and unstable. The minute someone you take them in your shoulders, nah, they just rejected. No, they're not rejected, they're rebellious. They just don't, yeah, they, they don't see, they don't see my gift. They, pastor just don't see it. He, he want me to be like him. They just too strict. They, they, they eat at a certain time. They just, they fast too much. They, they want you to be on time for church. They, they just, I just don't like it. All this restriction. That's not restriction. That's called protocol. There's so many youngsters in the body of Christ who are calling restrictions and he trying to keep me boxed in. Can't nobody keep you boxed in, but there must be order. There must be protocol. Somebody say it must be order. The minute someone starts adding something, when you go to your job, there must be order. This is an assembly line. We can't start. If it says 7 o'clock, it can't start at 7.50. This is production. People are waiting on us. Money is being lost. People are depending on us. Product is being shipped. 
So anything that they, and that's a distortion, anything that they call order or anytime you place any work, what, 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 what you mean to tell me? You mean to tell me you got to go to church every week? You mean to tell me you got to go behind somebody? Church? All these little things, it's, it's nothing new. People been doing it. You better be careful when false teachers start to come in. And see, the Bible says us as apostles, it says we got to start marking them. There's certain things you do privately, but there's certain things you have to publicly do. There's certain come on it's not nothing personal but it's for your own protection you ought to be thanking God that God allows some apostle some prophet some pastor some teacher to see beyond the smile to see beyond the words and to see beyond the open scriptures this can become a dangerous weapon in the hands of a con artist this can become a dangerous weapon in an untrained person this becomes a dangerous weapon in the hand of a novice and you should not handle it loosely And you should not take it upon yourself to teach. No, that, no that's what the word said. The Bible says, ah, before you take it upon yourself, there you go. You just want to keep the generation box. No, 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 no. I'm not, say, I'm not saying don't preach. I'm not saying don't use your platform. But I am saying you need to make yourself accountable to someone. I am asking you how many hours of Bible time and study time and preaching time because I don't need you practicing on me. And then we're practicing without accountability. I love what my man of God did. That he allowed me to preach the word and teach the word. But after I was done, he brought me in his office and he judged me. Y'all better say amen. He brought me in his office and he inspected me. And it made me the preacher that I am today. Because I consented to inspection. I said this in the hands of the wrong person is dangerous. I know I don't play with this. Don't even talk to me. Don't smile at me. Leave me alone. When I'm reading this, when God is talking, when God is dealing with me, I don't want to talk to you. Don't, don't, no, 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 don't text me. Leave me alone. It's my time with God. I'm serious about it. If God is speaking to me, I don't want to talk to you. When he's finished speaking to me, then I'll talk to you. But as long as he's speaking to me, his voice is the voice of significance. And I believe I need to hear him instead of you. It's dangerous. It's dangerous. It has been used by many cults. It has been used by many manipulators. It, it has been used by many who thought to bring people up under their control. Glory to God. It's called charismatic witchcraft. We come in the name of God. Are y'all not hearing what I'm saying? We come with a clothes, with a robe on. We come disguised. We come in the name of God. We come to do the work of the Lord. This in the hands of the wrong man will be dangerous it'll kill a thousands of people it'll bring a nation down oh. this in the hands of a wrong man oh, and this is why accountability is so important this is why submission is, I don't care how gifted you are I don't care what gift you have this is why accountability and submission is so important Jesus even had to come Jesus said oh my god Jesus even subjected himself to his parents when they were looking for him. He says, I know I got to be about my father's business, but the Bible said to show you, no matter how anointed he was, even if he was the Christos, he still had to humble himself. He says, someone is trying to distort the good news of Jesus. And it says, but though we are an angel from heaven Preach, oh y'all, but this, this scary right here. Watch this. This, this scary right here. This is apostolic words. Can't no little pastor come and just say this because he know he gonna lose his congregation. But when you know who you are in Christ Jesus, it's his apostolic words. This man, Paul, was not afraid. He, you know, he understood that these were not men he was wrestling with. Paul says, I wrestled with beasts at Ephesus. It was not literal beasts, but meaning that he was dealing with men who had an off mentality, who had a perverted mindset, and they were not stopped. I mean, they, they were just unreasonable men. They were not going to let go. They had a, a mindset like a lion. Glory to God. They were set up like principalities in a certain region, and Paul had to contend with them. For we wrestle 
not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. Principalities, principles, principles that govern a region, attitudes, perspectives that govern a region. Are you listening to me? When you come in New Orleans, you better you better pray because the spirit of murder and drugs governs the region. When you go to the Bay Area, you better watch yourself because the spirit of homosexuality governs the region. In any time, my God, and it takes an apostle, glory to God. It takes a sent one glory to God with illuminated preaching and teaching don't you understand that you are a threat don't you understand that God has scattered us dispersed us abroad because there are principalities over cities and regions and territories that will not let go See, and it is the preaching of the gospel. It's not coming with a cute patty cake, make a man message. It's not coming with a cute join the children's ministry, although I thank God for it. But it comes with the power of preaching the gospel, the power of teaching the gospel, the power of the demonstration of the gospel that brings deliverance to an area. If you think you're going to go and preach one night of revival and destroy a 30-year principality. You must be, and I tell you, once you make up in your mind that you're going to fight, you better be ready for a fight. And this is why, this is why we don't take it upon ourselves to start bringing railing accusations again. If God don't tell you to touch it, then leave it alone. The Bible, the Bible says that even the angels say, Satan, the Lord rebuke you. See, I'm not even acknowledging that little attention whore every time I walk in the room. What you must understand that Jesus is king and Jesus is Lord and the very presence that you have on your life, if you knew it, you would walk in the room in silence and the enemy would know that you're there. I don't, I, don't, I don't do that every prayer, just, just out of tradition. I don't, and we take good pleasure. No, 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 I ain't even naming you. Now, if I sense that you're around or your hand is in something, then I'll deal with it then in the authority of Jesus. But I don't just go around just looking for a devil like a ghostbuster. What happens is... When you release yourself before the time, you take upon yourself principalities that you have no knowledge of, demons that you have no knowledge of. When you take it upon yourself, and I can tell you, you don't need me to tell you to shut your ministry down. It's going to be shut down. Give it some time because you're not capable. You're not prepared. You're not equipped to handle this long term. Y'all better say amen. Huh. I got to tell you to shut it down. I'm going to warn you one time. Might warn you twice. After that, I'm going to just let you do your thing. Because if you're really tapping into some regional demons, you're going to have some stuff come against you. Tell me about how you're going to be sleeping at night. Tell me about your sleep life. Tell me about your dream life. Tell me about your relationship. Tell me about the struggle. It's not for naught. The Bible says when there is an open door, there are many adversaries. In other words, the higher you go, the higher you grow, you need to be fully covered, fully equipped. you ready for this you can't be taking this on yourself you can't do this alone no no Kevin I don't care how anointed you are you can't do this alone uh -uh, God is not calling you to be alone you apostolic in this season God is not calling you to be alone God is placing an errand and a her by your side I will not do this alone no I won't I refuse to wear myself out. I cannot do this alone God put you on a team when God wants to destroy a demon in the region he puts us on a team. And we don't fight against each other. And we recognize who our apostles are. No, y'all better say amen. And we recognize who our superiors are. The, the, the problem is, and they're not going to like this, is that most of the time pastors spend so, so many hours fighting amongst themselves. It's not so much the members, but it's the pastor because this one thinks that he is one and that one thinks that she is one. And so instead of us attacking the enemy, we sitting there trying to debate and find out who's going to call the shot. We trying to figure, and let me say this, because many have tried to dismiss the discussion, but I don't, I don't watch them Avenger movies. I don't watch some things. 
And I got the revelation. Where is he going? No, I don't watch the Avenger movies. I watched all those two. I watched them come together. But I watched one. I watched them play off each other. I watched them acknowledge a commander in chief. You need a commander in chief. You need one. Not so much that they're superior. Because if you are superior, that means that you're leading by example. If you are the one, that means that you're taking the oversight. If you are the one, that means you're showing everybody else the way. Wait, did you get that? We spend so, we spend so much time renouncing this one. And because I'm not the bishop in your backyard, you refuse to acknowledge me. And because you're afraid, see, 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 if you're going to do apostolic work, you have to get rid of your level of intimidation. See, 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 I see, I got delivered from membership years ago. See, when this thing started taking another turn, see, 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 see I'm not trying to coach you, hold on to you. If you're going to leave, leave. Did you hear me? If I'm not, I'm not doing, I'm not calling you. I'm not doing it. No, if you're going to leave, if you're not going to sit still and get that little demon out of you, you're going to be somewhere else causing trouble. God brought you here to Keep yourself still and for you to learn. You don't know everything. Be quiet. I, I, I'm sorry. I said that rudely. Forgive me. I didn't mean to say that like that. I, I'm, Elder Pearl, I mean to say that. I don't want, I'm not offending nobody. I'm saying that. When I walk in another man's house, I understand. Watch this. I don't, I don't even have to go in the pulpit. But when I walk in another man's house, I must respect the authority and the order that he has set up. I don't have any jurisdiction. Don't, you don't have authority unless the authority is given to you. Why, why you don't go in the place? God didn't tell me to go in the place. Why you don't go in reserve? He didn't tell me to go there. I have no authority that. This apostolic work is supposed to be a team type of ministry. I'm moving. I like how the Apostle Paul and, 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 and I like how Apollos did it when they were trying to make divisions over who's the best and who's the best preacher and who dressed the best and, and who have the most comedy shows and who have the biggest church and who, who live in the biggest house and who drive the biggest Bentley. When they were trying to make all of these things up about them, the Bible said the Apostle Paul said, wait a minute, who is Paul and who then is Apollos? Instead of allowing people to exalt one over the other, instead of allowing people people to take sides over who's best the wisdom of God came out and the apostles say wait a minute wait a minute one laid the foundation and one is supposed to water he said my part is to lay another is supposed to water see you have to be so comfortable in your vein that when you do what God tells you to do I don't need to be seen I don't need to be talking to nobody I want to go straight home and talk to my dog Are you listening to me? I don't have a need to be seen in crowds and be with the in crowd and I'm connected. I move in silence. Let me stop and insert this right here. You don't reveal everything you're getting ready to do to the general public. If you're making a real dent in the kingdom, you don't have to announce you on the scene. The demons will announce. You're not saying, no, no. Insecure people have to let everybody. I'm not talking about marketing. I'm talking about trying to blow yourself up, trying to make people believe that you are something that you are not. I'm not talking about marketing. No, demons will announce who you are. I say demons will announce who you are. So we've been spending our time fighting and, and we got the church in a, in a match. Should we believe this apostle and who's the one and they the one? In other words, you have to humble yourself. John said, you know what? John said, you know, no authority is taken except it be given. Whatever authority Jesus is operating in, it must, be, it must come from God. He said, as for me, my job is to decrease. You know what I've learned? Y'all catch this. Catch this nugget. Catch it. Let me see if you catch it. You know what I learned? The more successful you become, one or two things have to happen, right? 
you either going to have to cut down on your circle or you either going to have to keep around you're going to keep them around you long enough and trouble going to cut it down for you but one thing is for certain when you continue to climb the charts, the same people that you started out with cannot remain. Now, either you can make up in your mind. Why? People have this way. Things have a way of starting to come out once success starts. I'm going to be with you from the womb to the tomb, cousin, as long as you don't get more than me. People love you for where you are, but they don't have the stability to respect where you're going. Y'all better stop with this. I'm going in my destiny. Everybody, no, 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 you're not coming. No, you can't come. I love you, but you can't come. You're going to have to make the difference that everybody you love cannot come with you. They, they, y'all know how they got some they got some men that they, they own every child, they own everything. That that's that's, that's my son, that's my son. Oh, no, 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 I don't do that. No, no, no. No, 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 I I am not I'm not a pastor owner. I'm not I, I'm not a pastor owner. I, I, at, at one time, you know, when I was very young in ministry, yeah, dog, I got such and such and people and I no 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 not no more. No, 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 don't don't make me no never mind. Are you listening to what I'm saying? I'm not a people owner. I'm not I'm not trying to impress people with membership. I'm not trying to do it. We we've been trying to own people. No, no. God didn't tell us to own people. He didn't tell us to be lord over people. He told us to lead people by example and he told us to train them up to be this. You know what I I got to say one thing. Y'all saw that Martin that time Gina and was out there. I got to say one thing. I got to say one thing. I can't hear nothing you just say, Gina. I got to say one thing. When you start teaching on discipline and, and when you start teaching on discipleship, I got to tell you, leader, that the numbers tend to fall off. That the same numbers that you have. Uh, when you start talking about 5 a.m. prayer meeting, when, when you start talking about being the first one here and the last one to live, uh, the numbers taper. When you start talking about serving, the numbers start. When you, when you start talking about commit, the numbers start for. You know how I test people? Find out they're really walking in witchcraft? Tell them no. I said, well, I thought I saw a speck in you. The Holy Spirit drove me to tell you no. And then the full manifestation come out. No, 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 I'm beyond being buttered up. I will smile at you, know your motive, love you the same way. If you're going to bless me, go on and bless me and still pray for you and still know that you're a liar. We become owners of people. We, 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 don't, we, we make everything personal. Everything is personal. That's my, every, no, no, no. God didn't say to take everything personal and look at the devil, that old witch, and they join it. People been swapping churches. People been leaving one church, going to another. Can't nobody steal your members. That joke is stole. He could be stole that easy. He needed to go. And we play, and you offended that somebody got stuck. No. Bible said, it's though we, verse 8, or any other angel from heaven, it's called charismatic witchcraft, preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you. Let him be what now? Oh, that's 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 tough. Ooh. As we have said before, watch this. Verse number nine, read it again. As we have said before. No, no, stop, stop. Because y'all thought, y'all thought people got that I said what I said from other stuff. They got that from here. I said, no, no, Paul said what he said. That's where you got it from. I told y'all this dude don't play. He petty sometimes. Let me say, I mean, he petty. When he want to really say something, bear with me in my folly. 
when, when he want to get straightforward, he say, you know, it don't make no difference to me who they were. I'm like, golly, Paul, like you, just, like you just, whatever you feel, I don't know what's going on today. Let me say it again, he says. He says, watch this. If any other man preach any other gospel unto you, then that which you have received, ooh. Verse 10, read. I'm going somewhere. Somebody said the preacher's going somewhere. Read, everybody. question boils down to church who do you seek to please uh, and I'm, I'm about to say some stuff that's about to make y'all mad prepare yourself the, 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 the language and the lingo that the church I'm almost, I'm almost concerned that if there was a snake right in our face that we would put Ooh, they had an iguana. I saw an iguana. Ooh, ooh, thank you, Jesus. The girl stumbled right up on it. I mean, glory. I mean, it was like, right, it was blended in. It blended in with the grass. It, I said, Jesus. I'm almost persuaded that if it was a snake, that it would bite many of us. The enemy never comes and says, he never comes, he never comes and says, you know, I'm going to do something he does everything with light, with the appearance of, of, of good. The, the, he never comes in something dark, dressed up, and says, I am darkness. He never comes, but instead, he comes, the Bible says, he transforming himself into an angel of light. And so, I want to start off by saying that many of the topics that the believers have started to get into agreement with and what he wants is your agreement. Satan knows what it means when you agree with one of his topics, with one of his strategies, but oftentimes we have not studied deep enough to know his tactics and his strategies. I never thought we would come to a time where believers would have agreement with praying to the universe. I, I'm gonna say a few things. I, I, I never. I'm about to say a few things because some of your friends and you're engaging and agreeing with conversation. Who you seek persuading, man? Oh God, you're agreeing with topics of conversation, and the enemy makes it like it's no evil, like it's nothing wrong with it. Words such as energy, yeah, yeah, yeah. Words such as y'all not gonna like it. Cut me off now. Black girl magic and superpower, and everybody got a superpower now, and 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 energy and and vibration and, and manifestation. Come on, talk to me now. And now the church has started to subtly agree with these things and now the church has started to say there's nothing wrong with these topics and they get the biggest pastor, the biggest preacher with the greatest influence to say such a thing. And now the church has turned to more of a positive mindset. Now, I know I'm not going to get no invitation. A positive mind. But a positive mind is not a spiritual mind. But now, even when I use the term spirit, I have to make sure that I use a capital S, which is denoting the Holy Spirit. Because now you a whole spirit out here in 2021. You can be whoever you want to be. So, so, so some of y'all ditch y'all vision board and, 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 and you, who, first of all, let me ask you, who had bewitched you? Who put a spell? That's why I told y'all, you can't be listening to everybody. Who put a spell on you that you started listening to this one and that one? I said a few names the other night that I cannot say on camera today, but I said a few names how these men use the term God loosely, and they do a whole post on God, and they do whole articles on God, and at the end of the day, they're not talking about Jesus. At the end of the day, they're Islamic. At the end of the day, they're talking about demons and devils. Levels. And what you're not understanding is your agreement with it. I, I, I just, just, just want your agreement. You're a believer. 
See, the whole deception is this with Paul and the witch, the girl with the spirit of divination, is that what she wants Paul to do is essentially agree with what she's saying. She was saying the right thing, but it was the wrong spirit. But if Paul agreed with it, watch this now, y'all. See, all of the rulers know that she was a soothsayer. The rulers knew what she did for money, but Paul did not have knowledge of it. But the Bible says, and that's why you got to walk with people with this sermon. The Bible said, I told him, I said, there was someone who was coming on her prayer line and I saw the woman and I said, something's up with that woman's spirit. How can you say that, babe? I said, because I sense it. I sense something is wrong when our spirit, I went further into my investigation and found out that yes, it was another spirit. And I found out that people come on the prayer line and, and people come on and say, yes, God and amen. And we're not even talking about the same Jesus. We're not even talking about the same grace, but they impress you because they use the term God. The term God means Elohim. It can, it can be so broad. This is why the Bible says if one, watch this, acknowledges the Father without the Son, the Bible said he, I don't care who you are, is a liar. Don't get mad at me. I'm the messenger. The Bible says the person that denies that Jesus has come in the flesh is a, a liar and carries a spirit of anti. Nah, he ain't going to never make you say you a devil worshiper. But that text that somebody did, matter of fact, I done got to the point now. What, what, what this stuff should be, uh, listen, I don't care if you my member, let me say it right now. I don't care if you my friend, I don't care who you are. When you start saying some voodoo, hoodoo, witchcraft stuff, I refuse to get in agreement with it. I refuse to give you a like for participation. I refuse to give you a like for effort. Y'all not saying amen. Some of you are so soft-spoken, you don't want to hurt nobody's feelings, and this is the reason why people can't grow. The reason why people will stay in error is because you, your subtle agreement with it caused them to think that what they said was all right. I do it. You're in error. At the other church, they didn't call you out because they wanted your money. Apostles don't care. So we pray to the universe and everything is a God. Now, are you ready for this? Now, the chair you're sitting in can be a God. The trees. The moon. No, this is serious stuff. This is serious stuff. The sun. The the, 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 uh, it's amazing now. No, it don't hurt. It's not, it don't hurt nobody. We're doing more yoga now. I have nothing against stretching. You hear me? I believe you ought to stretch. They got some, I mean, you ought to learn those stretches. But when you start opening yourself up to something different while you stretch, you're opening yourself up to a kundalini. You're opening yourself up to something. My, my wife says, if you find yourself on your full flow praying and you start astral projecting, you, if you find out that your body is, if you start doing some weird stuff, levitating, floating. You are not under the influence of the Holy Spirit. You are under the influence of another spirit, another gospel, another Jesus, and you need the demon cast out of you. I never understood these, like Brian come weak back, jelly back. These weak jelly back men of God, jelly back saints of God. The Bible never said agree with demons. He said cast them out, but some of you are so afraid to lose your friends. You know they demonized, but you're afraid to tell them the truth because you think, if I, I'm going to lose a friend so so what if you're going to leave me, leave me today. You're going to hell with the demons that you have. If you don't repent, repent and the kingdom is at hand. You don't have a hell. The word says you're going to hell, not me. The witchcraft is so heavy now. I'm almost done. Stay with me. Believers start to agree with sides. This, 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 this political thing and what happened with, with, with the former president was not anything new. It was just a revealer. 
See, some things happen and certain things are on earth. See, see what happens if you mess around and go to a family reunion and y'all mess around and you think everything is squashed and all the beef is good and you think everything good and then all of a sudden cutting ski to come there and boy cutting ski to come there and start talking about some old stuff and you think everything is squared away and everything is good. Uh uh, uh uh, it was never squared away, it was never good. Cousin Skeeter just unraveled it, cousin Skeeter just unearthed it. He just brought to light what you already had in your heart. So, so the church just started to take sides to the point where we, I, I called it, and, and y'all, didn't, y'all didn't quote it or, or put a post from it, but I called it witchcraft praying. That the church has started to, to pray in witchcraft that, that this side is praying for their president to win. And that side is praying for their president to win. And don't we recognize that we all praying to the same God and that you can't tell him on me? And what is he going to do? Come on. But you need to understand that Christ is not divided. You need to understand. Get yourself out of your personal agenda, out of your personal perspective and what you think personally. And now it's time for you to start praying for the new man of God. Oh, the, the, the man of, of, of the nation. The, the man of the nation. Witchcraft. So when God won't do it for you, I'm done. This is my final point. Elder Pearl, when God won't do it for you, we've so watered down our message now that we have everybody believing. I said it, I'm a, I put a post about it. We have everybody believing that God never denies us, that the answer is always yes. We have everybody believing that God won't never tell you no, that God won't tell you, uh-uh, that's not for you. And so we come up under a lie. The Bible said in the book of Isaiah, prophesy unto me smooth words. Tell me what I want to hear. Go, go to the book. Can I come close it right here? I got three minutes. Y'all hurry up. Go to the book of First Kings, chapter 22. Hurry up. Glory to God, prophesy to me smooth. I, I don't want to go hit Kevin. I don't want to hit. He's going to tell me. I don't, I don't want to hear about that. Nigga. I don't want to hear that. I'm going down the street. Uh, give me a pro- prophet word. I'm gonna, I need a word from God. I need a word. First, first King chapter number 22. First King chapter number 22. Watch this. Watch this verse number 3. Y'all read First Kings 22 and 3. I was supposed to be teaching. I'm going a little faster than I thought. First Kings 22 and 3. Read somebody. Read. Do what it say. And the king of Israel, that's it, read. 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 Will thou go with me to battle? And Jehoshaphat said to the king of Israel, read. I inquire, pray thee at the word of the Lord. Then the king of Israel gathered the prophets, about 400 men, and said to them, shall I go against Ramah Gilead to battle, or shall I forbear? And they said, go up. They didn't consult. They said, go up. That's what people want to hear. Verse 7. Read. Stop. Everyone look up at me. But he, I, I hate him because he do not prophesy. Let me tell you what it means when he said he do not prophesy good. In other words, he, he doesn't tell me what I want to hear. He's not a yes man. He, 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 he's not, he's not a, a prophet for pay. No, no. And, and say, see, see, y'all, I've gotten, I've, Brother Sean, I've gotten, I done lost. Do you, you know how many members I probably could have had being a young man? Being a, being a young man, when I was a little bit younger, eight, nine, ten, I used to be able to get away, with, and, 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 you know, they still love me, and, they, you know, and, and they used to tell me, though, they used to say, well, I tell you, that young man got a mouth on it. Uh, but they respected me because I was young. And most, of the, and most of the time, people, when they see a young man doing a good work for the Lord, 
most of the time, even if he don't have nothing to say, like at all, they will still get behind him because of what he's trying to do. But not so with Kevin. I don't understand. But I understand that the prophetic and the apostolic is not the same as just being a pastor and just trying to be the people's friend and just trying to be popular and just trying to be the best leader out there. I understand that the apostolic and the prophetic is coming to challenge, is coming to grow you up, is coming to build you up, to edify you so you can become more like Jesus. And I got to be an obedient one. I told God one day, I was so, dis I was dis watch this, y'all don't know, you don't know what I go through. I was discouraged out of my obedience. No, you don't know what I'm talking about. I was discouraged out of my obedience. No, stay with me. I was discouraged because there were things that I was seeing and I was hearing that I knew would not be conducive with the person I would tell it to. But I had to say, God, okay, if you want me to say it to them, then I will say it. And I said it. And Brother Sean and I said it. And I said it over and over. Till I got to the point where I trained myself to always say what he says. Not that I'm perfect, no. But to be consistent to say what he says. Without pride, without being, uh, uh, what you call, prejudice or, or bias or, or in the middle, No just to say what he says. And this Micaiah here would say what God says and the king would get mad. And I can't get to the rest of the message. But what happens is in my closing is this. When you stop hearing the words of true prophets, there's only one way you can go and that way is called deception. And it's called self-deception. Watch this. It's not just good enough for you in this last hour to hear the truth. Now you're going to have to develop a love for the truth. The Bible said in the last hour, the Bible talks about this antichrist. And the Bible says they perish because they love not the truth. It didn't never say they wasn't going to hear it, but they did not love it. They love lies. They love false words. They love false prophets. They love smooth things. Prophesy out a car. Prophesy out a job. Say I'm going to get bigger. Say I'm going to get the promotion. They love that, but they didn't love the truth. And so the Bible said, that God sent them a strong delusion. Catch this, y'all. I'm done. That you so rejected the love of the truth that now your truth, your truth is now a lie. When you refuse to accept the truth, your truth, the truth that you receive becomes your lie. And your lie then becomes your stronghold. And your stronghold becomes your entanglement. And after it becomes your entanglement, then you're overcome by it. I, I just walked you through the gradual process. It's a process. It's a process. You being overcome, you being overtaken is a process. It was the lie. You believe the lie. You love the lie over the truth. And that's why God has to sometimes send you men who rub you wrong, who go against what you feel, who go against what you think, who stand bold and flat-footed and say, God didn't tell me that. God said you're missing it. And they have to love you enough to tell you that. And then you have to choose which one you're going to believe. No, 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 once I say the ball is out of my court. This is going to happen to so many people. What do you mean? It has started. What do you mean? What has started, Pastor Kevin? Deluded. I was going to type a message. I said, Lord, I'm, I'm, I'm afraid. There's so many deluded believers. 
It started with their agreement with lies. Watch this. Uh, I feel my apostolic roots coming on me. The Bible say contend for the faith that was once delivered to the contend. It didn't say lay down. It didn't say it said contend for the faith that was once delivered. Contend for the faith. Are you contending for the faith or do you seek to persuade men? It's something how you just overthrow your assignment for some light. You overthrow your, it didn't work over here. God didn't move fast enough and so I'm coming on this side. Anytime God don't move fast enough and you take it upon yourself, it is called witchcraft. It is called manipulation. You're going to get it some way or another Simon the sorcerer and that's why you need a Peter who can discern where you are who can tell you where you are who can say your heart is not right and you need to repent before God that apostolic strong when you see me coming straight there's a spirit that's in the airways and it's a spirit causing people to be deluded and I gotta tell you some of you are deluded who I'm sitting there preaching to today and I don't say that lightly I didn't say you were in the state of being overcome yet, but you're entangled with a delusion. No, let me say it again. Let me stand here and say it again. You're entangled with a delusion. And the delusion is designed to take you over. Catch what I say. I'm not playing with it. A delusion is designed to take you over. What Satan wants to do is ultimately get you to succumb to it, to where your faith is overthrown. Well, you start renouncing Jesus, and now you start saying, oh, I don't worship Jesus anymore. Uh-uh, 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 uh-uh. I, I chant, uh-uh, uh-uh. I worship the universe, uh-uh, uh-uh. I'm doing manifestation, uh-uh. I'm talking to the energy, uh-uh. I'm vibing, uh-uh, uh-uh. The enemy, it starts right there, but it ends with you being overtaken. And so I tell you today, the Bible said, Paul said, if any man come preaching any other gospel or doctrine, I don't care who their name is. I don't care what their bishop name is. I don't care if they're your friend. I don't care if they're your cousin. I don't care if they're your mother. I don't care if they're your brother. You love them, but you need to tell them the truth. Jesus said, he says, if any man love mother or brother, in other words, what he's saying, there's going to be a division that's going to come because you're going to have to stand up to your mama with godly love and with godly humility and tell them that she's out of order and tell her that your soul is on the line. Your friend, your neighbors, your community. Break your agreement. Break your agreement with the falsehood. And if you didn't know there were lies, I've revealed to you their lies. Don't do it for the sake of friendship. Instead, lead your friends to Jesus. And so you got to almost make sure when you say, God, I'm talking about Jesus is Lord. Are you listening to me? Somebody say, Jesus is Lord. The spirit of perversion is going to be heavy and it's come to deceive. You ready for this? The people of God. I'm really a nice person in the flesh, I think. Especially what you think. I mean, I, I really don't talk that much. I really don't. I have my topics that are laid out, my three topics. I really do. I really, and listen, and listen, I really love people. I really love people. And out of my love for people, I see that you're going to have to preach a gospel to save them who are perishing. My brother, my friend, the apostle used to sing an old song that always gets to me. He says in the song, in the Troubles of War, he says, my loved ones and friends still living in sin. The pleasures of this old world. I'll, I, I'll forever remember that song, almost bring me to tears. Just pulling them in. The pleasures of the world, just pulling them in. Everything. Watch this. Watch this. And see, this is why you need to be rooted and grounded in the truth. Because you don't have any discernment without a foundation. It's the fivefold that equip you and teach you so you won't be tossed to and fro with every wind of doctrine. And that's why they're trying to yeah, self-teach. See, no, you can't teach yourself. My loved ones and friends still living in sin. The pleasures of this old world just pulling them in. Everything the world says, they just in agreement with it. But the Bible tells you, believer, to try the spirits. Test them. Before you give your agreement, before you give your life, 
Test it. Weigh it against the word of God. See if it lines up with the word of God because there are many false spirits. And I determined to stand bold upon my watch. And all those years, God was making me for this. That God was making me to stand. That God was making me to be a revealer of truth. With godly love and with godly sincerity. Loving the people of God and warning them and teaching them and admonishing them the way. Saints of God, there are many spirits in our land. Break your agreement. Come on, stand to your feet. Help break my agreement. Come on, we're getting ready to renounce. Those you are listening on at home, it's time for you to renounce. Come on, when y'all get home, y'all got to watch Wonder Woman. At the end of the movie, everybody had to give up their power. In other words, if everybody got their own way, if everybody just did what they wanted to do, then the world would not be a better place. It would be a more chaotic place. And so he said, wait a minute, renounce your power. Oh, I love the movie. Renounce your power. He said, renounce it, renounce that. Re you know what Satan is doing? He's empowering men and women. Same spirit that he used to tempt Jesus. That pride of life, make me somebody. Make me someone. You are someone in Christ Jesus. Your identity is in Christ Jesus. You don't make a million dollars. You don't make a business. And so today we break our acceptance, our reliance. Well, we need men to approve us. Well, we need people to approve. Come on, some of us need to be delivered from people approval. Everything you do is to get someone to approve you. Now, we're not going to fight. We're not going to pull because it's your decision. I'm telling you, you're going to have to make a decision to renounce it. Renounce means to break your allegiance with it. Right now, where you stand in your house, come on, there's enough. God say, I have enough. Whatever it is the enemy is trying to tempt you with, it's not enough to turn. Like, come on, don't be a double agent. Some of you are double agents now. Some of you are on the large side and you're working for the enemy. Come on, break your allegiance. Come on, the double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. Come on, break your legions, whatever I said. Come on now, come on, come on, begin to pray for your kids. Come on, come on, be like Joshua and stand in the gap for your kids and say, I refuse to allow my sons. No, no, I'm not going to serve idols. And everyone in my house, we will not serve idols. Come on, break the, come on, break the idolatry. Come on, break the idolatry. Come on, break the rituals. I know the enemy has watered it down and made it seem like it's okay. It's good. It's just a term, a slogan, but it's not. It's an acknowledgement. It's an agreement. Come on, right where you are. I didn't ask you if you feel it. We're not trying to feel it. We got to know it. Come on, you're going to have to know it. Come on. It can't be gone off of no vibe, no vibration, no energy, no feeling. You got to know it in your knower. You got to know it in your checker. You got to know it in your spirit. So I pray right now in the name of Jesus that our discernment will come alive. I pray, Father, that you would flood us with light. I pray that you would flood us with illumination. God, the deception that's across our land, the deception in the body, God. Open up my eyes. Open up my ears. I turn my heart to you, Jesus. You said in your word, oh God, if we will turn our heart to you, then the blindness will be removed. The veil will be removed. Now you said the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit is Lord, where spirit is ruler, where the Holy Spirit is God, there is liberty. There is emancipation. There is consecration. There is dedication. There is... I see you. We want deliverance today. We want deliverance today. We want deliverance today. We plead the blood of Jesus. I'm going to see you. Break every hex. Break every curse. Everything our hands have touched. Everything our ears have agreed with. Every relationship that's not like you. Oh God, in the name of Jesus. We break it right now. We break our allegiance. We break our ties. And in the name of Jesus. 
Jesus. We break the spirit of perversion. We will not distort the truth. But Lord, we thank you for your truth. Reveal your truth by your spirit. It is not by might. It is not by power. But it is by your spirit. I need everything to pray in the spirit. Come on, Shandero. Bring it to the light. Bring it to the light. Areas of darkness. Bring it to the Elosia. Shandorobose. We break the witchcraft. We break it right now. That people been operating under. We break the control. We break the manipulation. This is our day. Our day of deliverance. I break every spell, every root, every hex. I break it. Every word curse. I break it in the name of Jesus. Come on, open your mouth and pray in the spirit. One moment, open your mouth, pray in the rhythm of shit. Yeah, 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 yeah if your kids are still in the home with you to monitor the activity on their phone, I said the Holy Ghost said it. To monitor what they're looking at, I don't, they're not going to like it. If you pay the bill, that's what the Holy Ghost said. Yeah. Yeah, I hear, I, yeah, 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 sowing seeds and planting seeds. Yeah, yeah, I see you. Yeah, 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 Rabasianda Rabaya, yeah, 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 Babosia, yeah, yeah, Masse, Shando Rabosia. Yeah, 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 for you and your offspring. The blessing is not just for you. Come on, don't be selfish. But it's for you and your offspring. If he can't get to you, he wants your offspring. Come on, right now, come on, take up a minute. Take up a travail to pray for your offspring. God, we pray that our kids... God, we pray for our sons right now. We pray that they are filled with the Spirit, filled with your power. We pray for your divine protection, your divine provision. Baptize them in the Holy Ghost. Men and women, oh God, of valor. Men and women of wisdom. Men and women of might. Oh, yeah, yeah, I see. We declare it. We declare it. Come on, somebody declare it. The spirit of deliverance right there at your home the spirit of deliverance in this anointing begin to renounce it begin to renounce it break your allegiance with every idol with every word break your allegiance say for God I live and for God I die break your allegiance break your allegiance and make your allegiance with God make your allegiance to God say he's my God say he's my Lord his name is Jesus Jesus and Jesus Jesus only, open your mouth and do it, somebody.
good. Stay in the vein. The anointing. Lord, I thank you for the gift of sight even right now. I thank you for the gift of sight even right now. Felicia, lift your hands. I got to do something with Holy Ghost boldness here right now. The Holy Spirit right now gives me the picture. This is the best way I can put it. Your deliverance almost like a pulling it's almost like a pulling your liberation is restricted the Holy Ghost told me to tell you that you must break your agreement with false seeds he says stop eating false seeds False seeds in the sense of conversations. False seeds in the sense of words. He said, you pray deliverance, but you eat false seeds. The Holy Spirit said, if you're going to have true emancipation, true deliverance, if your deliverance is not going to be restricted, then you're going to have to change the diet. Not only do I see it, but from the three of you, the Holy Spirit said to stop eating false seeds, that your deliverance will remain restricted. There's some things that all three of you need God to do, but the spirit of wisdom is the only thing that can highlight it. The spirit of wisdom, the word of the Lord, not your human wisdom, but not, not your human ways and not words from anyone else. I heard the Holy Spirit say that you three need to break your agreement with eating false seeds. You need to break that and change your mind and come into an agreement of God's word so your deliverance will no longer be restricted. God is not punishing you. God is not, everybody see, God is not trying to harm you. God is not trying to hurt you. God is delivering you from falsehood. He's delivering you from vanity. He's delivering you from ideologies and perspectives of men. When I brought you here, says the Lord, I brought you here to cleanse you. I brought you here to purge you. And now in the name of Jesus, you must accept it. Rabo Shaya, see. I heard the Lord says that I got to kill some things from the womb. I want you just to touch right here. All three of you just to in your womb. The Bible says that out of your belly shall flow rivers of living waters. Those waters are supposed to be fresh waters. They cleanse out impurities. And so right now in the name of Jesus, we come into an agreement right now. We break the spirit of false seeds. We will not eat false seeds and false words. Nah, nah, I'm telling you what I see in the spirit. It's almost like a baby was formed because of false seeds. And it's almost like the birth was getting ready to take place. And so I did what I did today because something has to be broken. You can't pray to be free and then live under the curse. You can't pray to be free and then live differently, walk differently. And so the Holy Ghost to say, the Holy Ghost says, I love you. And I want you free to break it, to abort it. The falsehood, the spirit of truth comes to deliver. The spirit of truth comes to him. I hear the Holy Ghost say that all three of you will go through a period of isolation. 
and during this isolation you used to cut off to any voice you are not to listen to any voice you are not to listen to any voice but his voice and it is a season and a time of purification it is a time of wisdom it is a time that God will recalibrate you it is a time where God will renew you and even your strength I hear your physical strength says the Lord hey, nah, nah, see. waits waits I break anxiety. I break dream demons. Can't even sleep at night. Getting up interrupted 3 o'clock in the morning, 2 o'clock in the morning. Saying to, you, saying to yourself, I just can't sleep. Heavy burdens carry. See fear. I see it. Fear. I break the spirit of fear. I wonder if I'm going to have it tomorrow. I wonder if I'm going to get I break the spirit of fear. It's a bondage. I break it in the name of Jesus. The spirit of the Lord comes to break you free. So we renounce it. We break our allegiance with fear. We renounce our allegiance with fear. The God who supplies all of our needs will supply ya ya my say. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. In this season, all you need is him. Uh-uh. uh-uh. All you need is him. Rabbi said, Shanda Robo see. And God show you that he is your provider he will show you that he is your keeper if you will let him today is a new day in a new beginning today we renounce the eggs that were getting ready to hatch and come forth the enemy's plan what the enemy meant for evil God has turned it around for good I want you to thank God right now. Say, God, I receive my deliverance. I receive, that's it, out of your mouth. I receive my healing. I receive my breakthrough. I receive my birthright. And God, today, I look to you. God, today, I turn to you. And hey, I say, and today, I plant the seed of righteousness. I plant the seed of trust. I plant the seed of health and restoration, physical, mental, and emotional, emotional in the name of Jesus. That is your portion. That is your portion. Somebody lift your hands and say, that is my portion. No, y'all ain't shouting loud enough. Say, hey, the plan of the enemy. The plan. Hey, y'all better watch it. He gonna like it. I cover you in prayer. I cover you by the blood. He ain't gonna like it. He don't like his plans being messed up. Come on, I cut. In the name of Jesus, open your mouth and praise him. Open your mouth. 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 Deliverance. 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 Deliverance.
smash me out. You smash me out. You smash me out. You smash me out. You smash me out. But because we know who we are, come on, lift those hands. If you know who you are, lift those hands at home right there. Come on, come on. There's no distance of time in the spirit. But the same anointing is here, it's at your house. You are the Lord that does deliver. Lift those hands. Come on, right where you are. Come on, pray in the spirit. Everybody bless you. You are the Lord that does deliver. Everybody bless you. Everybody bless you. Hey. Oh, oh. You are the Lord that does deliver. Everybody bless you. Hey. the Lord that does it. You snatch me up. 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 You are the Lord that does it. Say you snatch me up. Crack cocaine. Selling drugs. Smoking weed. From depression. From hate. From idolatry, you snatch me out. 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 Anxiety. Hey, hey. Fear. Depression. Suicidal tendencies. Poverty. Hey, hey. Brokenness. Loneliness. Hopelessness. Hey. 
You are the God that does it. Say yes, yes, yes. Now I want you to receive in your mind. Say today I'm liberated because I receive. I believe the word. Somebody say I believe the word. Somebody say one time. Say I believe the word. Just enlighten me. Just take one minute. I just take, don't touch them. Just take one minute to intercede for the person next to you. Just take one minute. Just intercede for them. Intercede for them. The person next to you. Those of you at home, I want you to intercede for your neighbor. Just intercede for them. Right there where you are. Just come on. Just one minute. Come on. Pray in the spirit. Right there where you are. What would I about to say? Come on, 35 more seconds. You are the Lord that does it. You snatch me up, 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 you snatch me up. You are the Lord that does it. You snatch me out. 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 You are the Lord that does it. Father, in the name of Jesus, I decree and declare liberty in the minds of the people of God. I decree and declare that they will never be the same. That this day is the dawn of a new day. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I decree and declare this is your day of deliverance. The beginning of a new day. I decree and declare that pain is dissipated right now. That healing and help begins to spring forth right now. Now, the emotional help begins to spring forth. Physical help begins to spring forth. Let it start right now. I curse pain. I curse it right now. And I speak the healing power of God. Let it flow. Virtue flow in your body from the top of your head, in your stomach, in your kidneys, in your lungs, from in every system of your body I decree it and declare it now you agree with me right there and say I decree and declare my deliverance, my liberation my liberty, my health my healing, it starts today it starts today it starts today say it starts today 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 if you believe it, give God a big shout. Come on, give it. Give him a shout. Now somebody shout, God is good. You free? Do you believe it? I said, do you believe it? Let's show. Let's show this anointing. Let's show. Let's show.
the sound of an army arising. I hear the sound of an army arising. I hear the sound of an army arising. One more time, say, I hear, I hear the sound of an army arise. I hear the sound of an army arising. I hear the sound of an army arising. Say, hear. One more time. Those of you, if the Lord is touching your heart right now when you receive the word, the word has been a blessing to you, you can sow. Information is coming across the screen. If the Lord is leading you, sow into this anointing, sow into this word. We hope that the word is a blessing to your life, that it's bringing deliverance, that the word is challenging you to be conformed to the image of Jesus. Do we seek to persuade men or do we desire to please God? And so I pray that you grow in grace and in God's knowledge and that you receive the fullness of God, not just the stuff, but the fullness of God in your life. One more minute. So I hear the sound of an army arise. I hear the sound of an army arising. I hear the sound of an army arise in this place. This place. bless those who are giving. Lord, I thank you, Lord, that they're sowing seed into good ground. I thank you, Lord, that the seed is growing. I thank you, Father, that every need is already provided for. Manifest miracles. Manifest signs and wonders speedily. We thank you for the word of the Lord over this house and those who are connected. You will protect us. You will preserve us. You will prosper us. This is our portion in this time. In Jesus' name. Ushers, you may serve the people. Stand to your feet. We're getting out of here. Come on, stand to your feet. Let the kingdom rise up. Rise up. Say rise up. Rise up. Let the kingdom rise up. Rise up. Say in this place. One more time. Everybody let the kingdom rise up. Say rise up. Say rise up, say rise up, let the kingdom rise up, say rise up in this place. One more time, everybody rise up, 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 we declare today is, yeah, today is the day of salvation. We thank you for a new day, a restoration, a realignment. We thank you for a repentance. As we leave this place, protect us, preserve us, and prosper us. In Jesus' name we pray. Somebody shout amen. God bless you. See you next time. Rise up. Rise up. Rise up.